If you didn't see me the first time, I was moving pretty quick. Um, next section we're doing is entitled 4-6 Triangle Congruence CPCTC. And you're thinking, what? What does mean? Alright, CPCTC. Alright? CPCTC. Alright? C-P-C-T-C. That's what I call it, okay? So, if your teacher asks, if you don't have me as a teacher, if you have me, don't ever say anything that's stupid. But if you have another teacher, whenever they say, uh, what's the, what proves these, these two sides of the triangle? You go, <laughs> <laughs> And they'll, they'll love it. And they'll like, look at you and go, <laughs> And they ask, what, what are you doing? And say, you're, what are you doing? <laughs> Get them every time. All right? It's called corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, that almost without the of and or, that pretty much spells out that. And you're thinking, what are the odds of that happening? Well, pretty good, seeing as how that's the reason they called it. Alright? Or CPCTC. Alright? Let's work through this, okay? And I know it sounds like, when I say, if I walk you down the street, I'm like, yo, man, how the corresponding parts of the congruent triangle going? You're going to be like, what the crap did you just say? Alright? For, for, secondly, you're going to be like, please step out of my face, because I talk really close. That's just how I like to communicate, you know, just right there, like this close. Like somebody to know that I'm there, and I like for them to feel my breath when I talk. Alright? <laughs> Corresponding, which means in the same spot but on a different thing. We learned that back when we did parallel lines cut by transversal. It was like if they're in the same spot but in different places. Does that make sense? Okay. Same spot, parts. If the parts that are in the same spot of triangles that are the exact same measure are also going to be the exact same measure. Okay? So if two triangles are equal, then there's parts that they match up with that are the exact same measure. Okay? Which makes sense. Like if I was like right here, bloop, and I had an identical twin, bloop, right here, then our right arms are going to be the exact same, match up. Obviously mine will be bigger than his because, I mean, look at me. I look like I do lots and lots of push-ups and sit-ups. <laughs> Alright? So, anyways, so corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So we know there's something that matches up in every triangle that is congruent to something and something else. All right? Now, I'm going to do one as an example with you. If you don't get it, then it's your fault. And you probably need to just, you know, be quiet. It's your fault. Okay? I'm kidding. Now, I'm going to do it with a proof. You won't always have to do a proof, but I'm going to do that because I know that that's what you like the least, and so I figured I'd help you with it. All right? So, here we go. Okay. Let's say our given. Our given is... I'm gonna go ahead. And, I'm gonna go ahead and start it in a two-column proof. If that's okay with you guys, okay? Because, well, that's what I want to do, and I'm gonna do what I want to do because I've got my teaching classes. All right. Let's say this is our drawing. That's P. This is Q R A. You know, you do have to talk with that when you do that. Okay. So we got our two triangles. They're like French kissing right here. All right. So we got P R. Bisects um, QPS QPS and I'm guessing the other angle. I don't know why I'm looking down here. At angle QRS. Okay. Now that would say it up here at the given, but I want to go ahead and start this because I got time to mess around writing stuff a bunch of times, okay? But apparently I've got time to mess around and take up the same amount of time explaining to you why I'm not writing it down. So I don't know why I'm even still talking. Okay? So, that's the given. Now, all you do is, we're trying to prove, let's, I didn't even told you what we're trying to prove, so I'm stupid. Alright, we're trying to prove that P, Q, and P, S are congruent. Prove that P, Q, and P, S are congruent. Can you even see that? No, barely. Watch this. I can do magic. You're welcome. Uh, now, we're trying to prove that PQ and PS, PQ and PS are congruent. 
Now, the reason we're, the way we're going to prove this is we're going to prove these two triangles are congruent. We're going to prove they're the exact same using stuff we just learned, you know, side to side, side angle side, all that. Proving these two triangles are congruent. And once we do that, all we do is add on one more step and say CBCTC. Okay? That will give us our last proof because we're trying to prove these two sides are equal. And to do that, we prove these triangles are equal. And then we can just say, oh, because the corresponding parts are congruent triangles, we're good. Our congruent. Okay, there we go. So that's a given. PR bisects QPS. Now, if that bisects it, what do we know? We know obviously that that angle is congruent to that angle. Okay? Angle QPS is congruent to angle SPR. You know how I know that? Because that's an angle bisector. And that's what angle bisectors do. They cut angles in half. So I'm just going to write the definition of an angle bisector. Okay? Now, I've got my angle proof. Okay, so right now we're sitting here and we got an A. I know I'm probably not going to prove this with side, side, side. Okay? The other thing I said was given that I didn't want to rewrite is that PR also bisects angle QRS. That's another given. Alright? PR bisects QRS. That means it cuts this angle in half. Doesn't mean it's equal to the same over here, but those two are equal. So, same thing. Angle QRS is congruent to angle SRP. How do I know that? It's the definition of an angle bisector. All day, every day. Okay? Now, right now, I know that two sets of angles are congruent. And I'm out of information. That's the only given I had was that that sucker bisected those two. Now you can't just make up something and say, well, I want these to be, these look kind of congruent. I'll use TBL, tell by looking. No. No. What you're going to use is, you're going to use those two things that I told you like eight times. You'll use 19 out of 20 times. Either it's vertical angles theorem, which means they make it look a necktie looking thing, and these opposite angles are congruent. Or you're going to use the reflexive property, which means that something is congruent to itself. Guess what? In this triangle, PR looks a lot like PR in this triangle. Alright, that's because it is the exact same line. Stuff is congruent to itself. I'm congruent to me. A cat is congruent to the same cat because it is the same cat. I don't know if that makes sense. People like cats for some reason. Alright? Now, I know PR is congruent to PR. How do I know that? Because it is PR. Alright? So I would just say reflexive property. And I would abbreviate because I'm a man. Alright? I don't know why that means I abbreviate, but apparently I am going to abbreviate. Alright? Now, I know this can grow to itself, so I don't have to mark another thing. I'm just marking that so I know. Now, here's the dealio. Pick up my handy dandy index finger. And I say, look at this. Angle, side, angle is congruent to this triangle's angle, side, angle. Guess what proves these two triangles congruent? Angle, side, angle. So, I know that these two triangles are congruent. P, Q, R. And make sure you match them up. Match up the angles with what they're corresponding with, with angle PSR. I know those two triangles are congruent because angle, side, angle. Does that feel pretty good? I thought it might. Does that feel pretty good? <laughs> thought it might. All right. Now, we're not completely finished yet. We know these two triangles are congruent. Our last step, the only thing you really have to do, like the, you know, we've been proven that two triangles are congruent because of all this junk, which we'd be done. The last step is we want to prove that PQ is congruent to PS. 
So pretty much after you prove they're congruent, you do one more step. You write down what you're proving, which is that two angles or sides are congruent, and then you write down C, P, C, T, C. And you are finished. You've done a proof, a two-column proof. You've proved these triangles are congruent, and then you prove that the sides of the triangle are congruent just by writing C, P, C, T, C. Whatever.